Hey, so I wanted to explain how I finally got a good passport photo. Um, they expire, at least at my age, uh, every 10 years. And uh, who keeps a calendar for 10 years? I mean, geez, a reminder. So um, I went to make a trip to Canada. I live in Washington State and um, got my uh, I made plans to meet friends up there. They were already north of the border, and I looked get my passport out, and it had expired five days uh, before the time I looked at it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't go to Canada, you know. And and I got online, and it it uh, from the research I was able to do on a few different websites, um, they're pretty lenient, at least if you're coming from uh, a a border state like Washington or something close to the Canadian border just up to Canada a few for a few days and then back but it was risky I mean I I went to the post office and I said what are they gonna do and and the guy at the post office said oh they'll stop you at the border coming into Canada they won't even let you through and I'm like well okay I'll just uh, have a plan B in case that happens and do something uh, uh, at Mount Baker or something because it's not far from Canada so I just went up there and took a chance and um, I didn't say anything to the border guard when I crossed into Canada and they let me through uh, with no mention at all of the fact that my passport was expired so I went up to um, Squamish Canada did a bunch of rock climbing for a week and then came back down and once again I said nothing to the US border guards uh, and they didn't say uh, uh, they scanned it and they didn't say a single thing to me about my passport being expired and I just rolled right on through so I'm pretty amazed but you know obviously you don't want to have that kind of um, dread hanging over you crossing the border um, so I uh, decided to um, take my own picture and this tutorial explains how to uh, edit your photo this this is I um, I have a couple photo lights um, but you could also do it outside in probably shade against a, like a white wall or just hang a white sheet up um, what I did is I was inside I um, I think my wife and I took turns shooting each other's photo I have a full frame Canon 60 6D as in Delta, DSLR, digital DSLR. Uh, but I think you could do it with an iPhone or a, a good Android. It doesn't matter. Um, it's more about good lighting. Uh, make sure your photo's in focus, obviously. And then have something white behind you. Um, and, and this is a piece of shiny uh, magazine paper, like a 30-inch a piece of a shiny paper. I used to be a printer, so I had that. Um, I should have probably used a white sheet. You could even use a green screen if you know what that is. But you can tell that the light was uh, reflecting off this unevenly, off the, the, the glossy, the big sheet of glossy paper. So I had problems in the background. Um, I can show you what it ended up looking like at the end, uh, but I wanted to sort of describe my journey because it was quite a, quite a thing. I mean, you can go to, like my wife went to Walgreens and for seven dollars they had a half off uh, sale they took the photo but I mean the photo was really low quality I can show it to you the one that she got at Wal Walgreens uh, let's see so minus minus here's the one that my wife got at Walgreens alright the clerk took it on the spot um, not very well lit. The camera that the clerk used was like she said it was about a one inch cube, you know, I mean, teeny little camera, really low quality photo. And this is my wife's actually a lot uh, prettier than that. Um, but and then they they brought the photo uh, into this software they have at Walgreens, just this real no brain kind of press a couple of buttons sort of software that inspects it for passing passport rules. And then they they removed the background because she, she didn't have great light either, the Walgreens clerk. Um, and they just have an automated button that removes the background and turns it white. And the, if, if you know anything about Photoshop, 
This tutorial is aimed at people that know Photoshop or a similar image editor. Um, it's really low quality selecting work around the head. I mean, it, anybody that knows anything about editing uh, photos in Photoshop would look at that Walgreens uh, selection job where the, you know, at the edge where the white meets the head and you like, oh my god, that's really cheesy work. So I feel like I, I've been using Photoshop for 20 years. I can do a better job than that. Plus, I enjoy the process of taking my own photo, even though it, <laughs> if I was, uh, paying myself an hourly wage, you know, this probably cost me, with all the mistakes I made, two full days of work. But in the end, I get a really good passport photo. Here's uh, the f end result of all of my learning curve. White passport, flat, tiff, yeah. So this is mine um, up here, where I stripped out the white background. You can see that's a really good quality photo. I'm actually at 200% zoom, so there you know and and you look at the selection work around the around the head and it's pretty good i mean i can tell that there's some flaws in there like a, it, hair of course is always a little tricky to select off a white background but it, it's good enough i think for the passport i won't know for a month whether this passport uh worked or not i mean i paid for um when i sent it off i had to pay for expedited service I think the base you can pay is $110, but I paid like 186 or something to hopefully get it back a little faster. Anyway, the, it was a long process. So when I f first took the photo, uh, it looked like, where are we? Looked like that. And I, uh, obviously I had to paint over the the reflections so I did that on a new layer that would be right here you can see I just um, basically use the paintbrush tool uh, this is uh, this computer I'm recording on it has a slightly older version of Photoshop but there's the brush tool and I would typically go to a soft brush and I would set my opacity of the brush at you know like 20% or something like that um, and then if that had not been there I'd make a new layer I would sample the like the color that is most common which is up here so I make my brush bigger bracket key left right left and right bracket key I would hold the alt key down and I drop that color right there and then on this new layer you know I could maybe name it the patch layer patch I would start painting um, over that uh, color to blend it in softly you can see I just click 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 and gradually paint away all the problems Oh, the problems. Click, 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 and you can see it paints away. Now, I didn't know that the um, post office does not like anything but white in the background. They they say in their directions on the, what is it, the DS, DS82 for renewing a passport form, um, that it can be white or off-white and you're not allowed to retouch the face at all um, but obviously based on what I saw from the clerk at Walgreens they are everyone is retouching the background because how do you get a perfectly white background unless you've got a true photo studio with very bright lights shining behind your model um, to completely cure any shadows so everybody's gonna have to do this whether you do it yourself or you do it at, at, uh, or you let um, a clerk at Walgreens or Costco or something do it for you so that was my process. Um, I just painted away, and, and obviously, you know, I had to get in pretty close, um, and very carefully. Like that, I actually did a better job than you can see here um, on another document. You can see it's kind of ragged right there um, by the left side. I guess it would be my right ear or the left side of the face. Um, but I love the quality that you see in this photo. I mean, that's what you get with a full-frame DSLR. There's nothing wrong with that. Overkill, of course, for a passport photo. But I guess I'm kind of 
I'm kind of weird that way. I really like quality as an artist and a painter and a photographer. So, uh, th my first thought, and then there's the other question of how do you get a print that is in exactly the right format that's um, two inches? And I have one, where is it? Um, yeah, so this is a scan of the the DS82 um, Renew Passport application, and they and it's uh, you're supposed to paint, paint. I'm sorry, you're supposed to staple a two inch by two inch photo onto this passport form that you send them. I have no idea why they won't let you send them digital files, which are much higher quality. I guess they're old school that way. But anyway, it has to be printed on glossy photograph paper with a completely white background behind your face and it needs to measure exactly two inches square and uh, the head image has to be from uh, one inch to one and three eighths inch in this exact position on the photo. So there's a lot of uh, restrictions and complications. I mean the the clerk at Walgreen had all that stuff built into her little uh, computer applications. She you know she took your photo with a <laughs> look like a hundred dollar camera or less um, and then went into her software program and then print it, printed it out on paper. Um, I can tell you that you do not want to go to Target if you're doing this to print um, your photo. You also don't want to do what I did which was go to um, Illustrator. Hang on a sec. Because I also know Illustrator and I thought well Illustrator is really straightforward. I'll just make a this is Illustrator. Don't do this. Just I suppose you could if you knew how to if uh, I don't know because Walgreens might not recognize a PDF but the cool thing about Illustrator is it's designed for ink on paper so you know I just did a new 8 half by 11 document standard you know Xerox copy size um, brought in my TIFFs and shrunk them down for example this one I can touch and here in the uh, transform palette of Illustrator it says it's exactly two inches by two inches so that's easy printed out on paper um, which I did I went to a FedEx print shop and um, hang on I'm checking my time uh, 12 minutes okay I went to a FedEx print shop I said hey print this on your glossiest paper because um, I knew it, Illustrator doesn't ever mess up if you say it's something is eight and a half by eleven and you and you measure it at two inches by two inches it's gonna print exactly two inches by two inches so I get it back from uh, FedEx, let's see, I've got a photo of that one. Ah, uh, here they are. These are so bad. This is the FedEx version. Um, half tone dots. I mean, can't don't they have a better printer than that at FedEx? Uh, you know, I mean, you, you look at it under a microscope, and there's little dots, just like on a, you know, I used to be a printing press operator, so it was a uh, red green and cyan and black dots and that's not acceptable it needs to be photo quality so that was that was my first mistake was trying to do it at FedEx with an Illustrator PDF so scratch that uh, the next thing I did is I went to uh, Target I took a I I made a Photoshop document that was four by six so um, yeah this is that version uh, so in Photoshop, I simply went to uh, File New. Uh, let's see, this one is so I want. This is the older version of Photoshop. I want four inches wide by uh, six, and of course I got to set these to inches. Oh, okay. Let's try this again. Four inches by six inches resolution 300 that's important uh, background contents white click OK and then I uh, went to where am I okay this one or is it this yeah it's this one so first I I started with this one. I thought, well, they don't really need a white background. It says in the directions that can be off white, so I use this one. So I did a selection. I like 
that and uh, I want to copy all the pixels under all the layers so uh, control shift C as in Charlie that grabs all the pictures I come back to my new document which is right here this measures 4 by 6 if you're not sure you can go to image image size um, document size is 4 inches by 6 inches tall 300 pixels per inch 1200 by 1800 whatever cancel um, and I simply paste my photo in control V and it comes in huge which is good so I'll name this layer uh, mark Um, and now you got to think, okay, how do I shrink this photo down onto this 4x6? Because Walgreens wants, you don't want to have to tell Walgreens anything about size. You just want to say, yeah, I want a 4x6. And then when it prints, the images are exactly four, uh, two inches square. So like, well, how do you make that happen in Photoshop? You know, these are just little things that I was having to figure out. So I thought, okay, set my rulers at inches which is right here, inches. Take my selection tool um, and I'm going to go to a new layer and I'll drag out a selection that is actually uh, two inches and Photoshop gives me the readout. So let's see, I'll put, because I usually, I was doing my wife's at the same time, so um, two inches by I need a steady end. I need a better mouth there. Okay, two by two. Wow, that took two hands. Okay. If you're not sure it's two by two, you can go to info. And info says that is exactly two inches by two inches. All right. Uh, and then I'm going to fill some paint in there. I could also do this as a new channel, but whatever. Here, I'll pick some red paint or whatever. Okay. Alt backspace, pour red paint. And that gives me a, a layer here. I'll call this two inches by two inches. Sorry, two inches by two inches. Whatever. And then I want the photo to fit into that. So here's the photo. You can see, um, oops, wrong layer. It doesn't fit. So I'm going to launch a selection by control clicking my two inches by two inches thing. There it is. I can turn that layer off now. Go to this and I'm going to add a layer mask. Uh, on this layer that has the picture. So I go down, I say, hey, uh, give me a mask. All right. And then I'm going to unchain the picture and then uh, from the mask and then click the picture. And uh, I want to do a free transform. So it's control T as in tango. So control T and I'll zoom out. Let's see, I need a lock width and height. In newer versions of Photoshop, you don't need to constrain proportions. So I don't want to have to hold shift. And then you're going like, uh, gosh, um, what if I don't get it the right size? So I'm going to say escape, because there's more yet to do. Um, I'm going to stop this recording because I'm at uh, like 20 minutes or so. I think it's F10. All right, we're back. Hang on, let me start my timer again. Stop. Start. No. Reset. Start. All right. So I'm, I got my 4 by 6 um, 300 DPI Photoshop file. Um, 
and I want to know exactly how to shrink this photo. So what I did is I went into um, this uh, photo that I took uh, just with my iPhone of this um, D DS82 US Customs Passport form. And I brought this in to uh, my 4x6 to use as a guide. Um, which is very similar to, <laughs> I'm basically recreating the software they use at Walgreens, all here at sitting at home. So this file, I'm just going to do a control A, control C. Uh, yeah, I should be able to, well, hang on. I don't think it's square. Was what I did is I, I did a perspective crop on this to make sure that it was square. So let me just redo that. Yeah, because when I took the photo, I, I had a little parallax going on, and my iPhone didn't have it quite square to the photo, so I'm using the Perspective Transform tool in Photoshop. I think I have Snap Off. I use this a lot when I'm taking pictures of paintings and stuff to get... I know the painting boards are always square. And then I have to do this because I rarely have take the time to set up my uh, tripod and measure all the angles. This looks like it's pretty good. You get the idea. All right, and then crop to that, and then um, Control A to select, Control C, and then switch over to this guy and paste in that uh, thing. So new layer. Control V, and, and that came in too big. So, but this is getting easier now because I have this layer here, which is exactly the right size, and I just need to fit this layer uh, into that layer. So let's see. I think I'll lower opacity of that, so I can see through, and then this layer. I'll transform to fit the red layer, which because I know the red layer is exactly two inches. So, um, Control T, and I want to lock width and height together. I'll just shrink this down to fit. Because once I have this guideline in my Photoshop file, oh, I've got Snap on. Go away, Snap. Um, zoom in. Get my bodas exactly right. Just a wee bit off. I think it might be, huh? Oh, it's probably the printing or my cropping or the iPhone photo, but something's just a little bit off. But I'd say that's close enough. Okay, there we go. Now I can turn that off, I'll lower the opacity of this. All right. So now I can see the, the alignment grid that the government wants you to have your photo to fit. And my photo all right. Now, before I shrink this photo, I want to convert it to a smart object. So let me discard this uh, delete layer mask because when I start to shrink this photo, I don't want to lose any pictures in case I end up having to enlarge it or something. So I'll say uh, convert to smart object. That just uh, preserves all the pixels inside the layer of Photoshop. And now I'll add the mask back. I'm going to control click that to get my selection back. Add a layer mask to the smart object layer. All right, unchain the two, the mask from the photo. Click the photo, control T, zoom out a whole bunch. Oh, control Z. Forgot to constrain proportions. Press that chain button in. 
The new Photoshop does that by default. 2019. And then I need to get closer, so Control Plus. Control Plus. All right, and now you can see that with this setup here, um, sorry, my wife just texted me. I can fit this in exactly um, using their guide, so. Uh, keep the government happy. I don't know if they consider hair part of that or not, but the, when I went to the post office um, to get just some advice from their passport photographer, because they're definitely, I think, more skilled than Walgreens, although I don't know actually, um, they're like, oh, you need to have that face bigger, less of the shirt. So I'm going to say we go by the skull size and not the hair, which means um, uh, all right, that's looking pretty good. And then I'll say uh, enter, and I'll turn off my layer mask, and there's the photo. And we know it's exactly two inches. All right. Well, we still have the problem of the gray background, so that's that's a solvable problem. Um, but at least you get an idea of the, some of these tricks I'm using here with the guide from the government and the mask and all that. So to solve the um, the problem of the print quality, um, yeah. So I went to the post office, and uh, after I so Target, don't go there. The the printing that gray that you just saw turned blue, and uh, I went to the post office and says, no, no, you can't have blue. Um, so I went to Walgreens and printed it, and, and Walgreens is cool because they you plug your USB drive in with your little four by six, and at least they don't enter you know bizarre shades of blue. Plus you don't have to use JPEGs; you can use TIFFs even layered TIFFs like this Photoshop layered TIFF um, but I still had this uh, gray background and um, the Walgreens lady says well yeah that looks pretty good but you should have a pure white background so I'm like oh jeez but at least Walgreens is real high quality like photographic quality uh, prints uh, none of the stuff like from Target or FedEx um, I don't know if you can even tell but yeah, it's easier to see in Photoshop, but it's fine. There's no problems with that. You can look at it with a, a printer's magnifying glass, and it looks great. It's true photographic quality. But to get from this to that with the white background um, meant I have to go back to Photoshop. Um, let's see which document has it. That's the flat one. All right, well, let's just use this one then. Um, so this is uh, the, the original photo where if I start turning stuff off, you see what I've got here. That was the original photo. Here I've painted in, painted over with airbrush the uh, reflections on my background. Uh, and then I added in, I, I did basically, once I got it flat, I did a selection, let's see, in the newer 2019 Photoshop you have this, uh, well I guess we still have the quick selection tool, so I did something like this, I'm using the uh, quick selection tool I think, it's a selection like that, um, yeah, but see it's missing stuff. So the, the newer version of Photoshop does a much better job of selecting this oh no I just remembered sorry um, my brain is not working that well once I had this here I did I use color range color range is pretty cool so to select this gray background and not use like the magic wand or quick selection tool I used um, image or no it's under select and then color range 
I've always loved coloring. Just been around for, I don't know, 20 years maybe? 15 years in Photoshop? And I want to see the image. And where's my preview? Selection preview. Um, there we are. Okay. So the fuzziness, I think it's usually the default is 40, if I'm not mistaken. Close enough. And you just eye drop a color, and then you say, hey, Photoshop, show me. And I prefer the quick mass version. Well, that's an ugly color. Let's go with uh, black matte. Yeah, that looks better. All right. And then you hold shift and you just make sure you've eye dropped all of the gray. Come on. And I want to. Oh, sorry. I had it all down. There we go. Shift. So I'm adding some of those other shades of gray to make sure I get it all. I think you can even drag while you hold shift. See how it's doing a pretty good job? It's getting them. All right, I like that. And then I say, yeah, um, OK, give me a selection. OK. Uh, and I think I did a little bit of detail work here, if I remember. Yeah, because the hair is pretty sloppy. So what you can do, um, if you know Photoshop, is you can add or remove from selection. Uh, you go to Q for Quick Mask. And in Quick Mask mode, you can paint with black or white using the same uh, fuzzy brush. Let's see. This, I think I use hardness of zero and then you adjust your size and you come in here and like I want to grab more of this hair it's kinda of choppy I think with a brush you can set opacity sample all layers because I don't think you have to use black and white where's brushes window brushes getting my versions of Photoshop confused. I was thinking in quick masking paint with gray. Maybe you just have to choose a gray color. Oh, there it is. I'm missing it. Sorry. Um, brush tool. Oh, I switched to Elster. Gosh, so confusing. Photoshop <laughs> window brushes. And uh, now I got the wrong brush tool. Eventually I'll get there. So hardness is zero. Yeah, there's no, at least in this. Um, oh, there it is. Um, opacity, good. All right, so I got a soft brush. Too big. And then with black, I can add to the mask. So I'm in quick mask, so Q, Q. So I can add more hair uh, with opacity of, say, 20 or whatever. Um, add more black to see how I fuzz it out. Um, this is how you soften some of the ugliness in the edge um, to get some of the hair. I could even go lower opacity. Because otherwise you get a choppy edge to your selection. Just gradually bring in a few of those hairs, soften up some of this uh, granularity that happens. Now, obviously, Walgreens isn't going to do this kind of detail work. They don't care. For seven bucks, they can't care. Um, but that's the general idea. And then uh, Q to come out of Quick Mask. Uh, there's my selection. 
and uh, minus, and I ended up adding it as a hue saturation layer. So let's zoom out a little bit more. I can do another one right now. Um, like with that selection active, which is the thing I want to change, or maybe I need to invert it, I always get confused. I'll come down here and add a new adjustment layer, and I want hue saturation, and it affects everything that's below. And then here in hue and saturation, I drop any colors that might be uh, below me in the selected area, which is the white, not the black. Desaturate, you see I can go set, that's the colors that are there. I go completely desaturated and then I go lightness up to white. And there that is. That's how I got the white background. Um, and they of course have software that just does that. You can see the change happening right there. Um, anything I need to tweak, I go into the hue and saturation mask, like if I zoom in on the face and maybe it's a little choppy up here around the hair and it's always you know you lose a little quality there um, just due to the nature of selecting there's tutorials you can watch on Photoshop for uh, extracting hair from backgrounds but I basically just rely on the uh, paintbrush painting on the mask to soften anything that looks unreal alright and then of course you just drag out a selection with your marquee tool, control shift C to copy all the layers visible, switch over to this, or rather um, this one, and paste it in to replace this one with the gray background. Go to Walgreens, uh, find the TIFF on your flash, go there with an empty TIFF, an empty flash drive, so it's easy to find because they're the file navigator at the Walgreens store and at Target's is pretty <laughs> pretty bare bones. It's made for people that don't know anything about file management. So just an empty USB drive with one TIFF on it. You might want to bring a JPEG version of it too. They both seem to print about the same quality. Um, it's okay to have a layered TIFF from Photoshop. And uh, when it looks like this, nope, oh, wrong one got all these different files open and control minus 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 there's my 4 by 6 this is the one I took to Walgreens my wife ended up she got so tired of waiting for me to get a, a good passport photo she paid Walgreens but I showed you the quality it's just really bad um, anyway that's what I printed and it looked flawless uh, very sharp um, I think that's all my secrets I've given away all my secrets. Learning curve uh, of getting a good and of course I drew with pencil. The the photographic paper does not accept pen. It doesn't dry. So I used a sharp pencil. Ruled out two by two. Cut it. Stuck it to my passport. We'll see if they allow it. But I think they will. I'll know in a month. That's all I got. I got how to stop this thing. I think it's F10.